Hi, it's Andrew from Astrons, and today we're going to take a look at using your 6 inch Astrons Dobsonian telescope. With the telescope, there are two parts the base and the optical tube. So you can install them separately or you can install them together, whichever is your preference. Firstly, we're going to load the optical tube into the base. Now, as simple as putting the tube in, mount it onto the Teflon pads centered. Uh, note the bottom of the base should be opposite the solid rear panel so I can swing freely this way and on each side is your tension springs and these springs hook as you hook into the bottom of the spring the loop is just for your fingers the tension springs mount lock onto the hook there Note, this is just for your fingers, we're hooking directly onto the spring itself. And you can either put tension on one side, or on both sides, whichever is your... Um, I do recommend that when you are not, you're not using a telescope, is to take the tension springs uh, loose, so they're just hanging without the tension on them. So that provides the tension on the uh, vertical axis, or the altitude axis. In the middle of the telescope, and the middle of the base, there is a knob here, and that provides the tension for the azimuth, or the left-right axis of the telescope. You want it so it's firm, but not locked. So it can move, still move reasonably easily, uh, but there's a little bit of tension to stay on an object. The telescope itself comes with a 6x30 finder scope. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, and a one and a quarter inch focuser. Uh, the, with the, uh, so the focus will take any standard one and a quarter inch accessory. The telescope also comes with two eyepieces and an extension tube. Included is a 9mm uh, plossil eyepiece, a 25mm plossil eyepiece and an extension tube. Uh, the extension tube is just if you need it to achieve focus. You may not need to use it at all. Loosen off the lock, take the plastic dust plug out. Um, when you're not using the telescope, keep the dust plug in to keep, obviously keep dust out of the system. Eyepiece will slot in, lock it in, and we can look through. For the focuser itself, there are on the base there are two screws. When you have both screws loose, the focuser is loose itself. When the top screw is in, the one close to the eyepiece, and you just so it holds, don't be too tight. The focus will wind in and out. As you change eyepieces from your low power to your high power eyepiece, uh, the uh, you'll need to change focus. If you push, take the other screw in, they'll actually lock it in position, so you can turn the handles and it won't move out of focus. Uh, this telescope has a 1200 mil focal length, so the two piece eyepieces included. The 25mm eyepiece will give 48 times magnification. The 9mm eyepiece will give 133 times magnification. So we tend to use the low power eyepiece for looking at um, the whole moon or big clusters. You can use the high power eyepiece for looking at planets or close up looks at the moon. And any standard one and a quarter eyepiece can be added uh, to increase your range. When you first use your telescope, uh, you need to calibrate the finder scope to your telescope. So basically you want to match the view through the finder scope and through the main eyepiece. Uh, you can do this on a star or on the moon, but I find it easier to actually do it in the daytime. And I'll show you that process now. So, take the dust cover off. What we can do is use the low powered eyepiece, the 25mm eyepiece in the focuser. In the daytime is a good time to do this because even out of focus, we can tell the difference between the sky and the ground. So we're going to do it in reverse, and we're going to find something in the telescope first, and then match the finder scope to that object. We're going to use something on the tree line, such as a tree, a building, um, something we can easily recognize, but it's going to be at least a few kilometers away. Uh, so we use the low powered eyepiece, the 25mm eyepiece, in our focuser. We're going to look through, and we're going to lower the telescope down until we find the border between the ground and the sky. So like this, looking through, lower and lower and lower. Once we do 
reach the uh, ground, we can then focus it to see what we're looking at, and then we can move along the horizon line, left or right, to find the object we want to align on, such as our tree. Once we've found that in the main telescope, we can then match the finder scope to that object. So you should see the finder scope, um, the object in the finder scope, but it may not be centered. And we can use the two adjustment screws so that the object we're looking at, like our tree, will be in the middle of the crosshairs of the telescope. Basically, we're matching the finder scope view to the telescope view. When you're first going out at night time to view, setting your telescope up, it does pay to just double check when you put this on a star that the object is also in the center of the finder, just in case the knobs have been bumped or uh, moved. If they're not aligned, it makes it very frustrating to be able to find things in the sky. For focusing the finder, there is a lock ring at the top we can loosen off, and then we can then twist it to focus. Once it is in focus, lock it back in. Uh, when you're not using a telescope, always recommend putting the covers back onto the finder, the eyepieces, because you want to keep the optical surfaces clean and dust off them. And the same with your telescope, put the cover cap back on your telescope. In the New Zealand climate, uh, dew is a fact of life, and the objects that will dew up easily will be the finder scope and maybe the eyepiece. If it does dew up, um, do not wipe the optical surfaces. Um, because you can damage the coatings and ruin the view. So, um, if you do need to um, remove the dew off your finder scope, I recommend taking the finder out, take it inside and wave it in front of a heater or a uh, to evaporate the dew off it. But, an easy way to avoid that is to make yourself a little dew cap. And while you can make a permanent one, uh, I do a, just a simple disposable one with a simple sheet of paper. In this case, we can fold it in half. We can wrap the sheet of paper around the top of the finder tube like that and just tape it up and that provides a dew cap that will last for your evening viewing. And when you're finished for the evening, you can just take that off and recycle the paper. Again, the same with the eyepiece, if it dews up, uh, then uh, evaporate it off with a, with a uh, bit, of, bit of heat rather than uh, wiping it off. The, because with the main telescope, the mirror is right down the bottom, it should not you up at all. To change magnification, we just want to change the eyepiece. So we can take one eyepiece out, put another eyepiece in, and then refocus as necessary. Note, magnification will just make things bigger, not better. And while you can magnify planets a uh, reasonable amount, um, we caution about over magnifying objects because when you magnify something you'll be looking at a smaller field of view uh, and you'll also be magnifying the atmospheric disturbances more. So you won't necessarily improve the view. So we can take this eyepiece out and put the other eyepiece in. And then refocus. So, for your typical viewing, basically once your telescope's all set up, ready to go, uh, we can move the telescope left, right, up and down. We align something up in the finder scope, first of all. Put it in the centre of the crosshairs. Once we've done our finder alignment, the, in the crosshairs, it will then be in the main eyepiece, and we can look at it in detail there. And as the earth turns, as the object drifts across the eyepiece, you just carefully adjust your telescope to keep it towards the centre of the eyepiece. Looking after your telescope, it is an optical instrument, so as I mentioned, keep the covers on when you're not using it. Um, treat it carefully without any major bumps, um, so you don't want to misalign the mirrors. Um, and if your telescope does get um, dewy and wet on the outside in the evening, when you bring it inside, just uh, dry it off and keep it clean. The base is very simple, MDF timber, um, don't leave it outside, as it will, uh, otherwise it would buckle in the weather. Otherwise the Dobsonian telescope is very easy to look after, and nice and simple, easy to use. Enjoy using your telescope, 
and enjoy exploring the night sky.